Hey Trons, um, today we're going to do a little preview of Lab 5 for you. Um, in Lab 5 we're learning microcap, we're doing the microcap application for circuit analysis lab and we thought we'd give you some help with microcap so nobody's left behind. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to open microcap. So I'm on Windows 8 so this might look a little bit different. but. And it's the microcap 10 evaluation is the one that we'll use this year. So click on that and it'll open up. Okay, close whatever it tells you. And so the first thing you want to do, number one of your pre-lab is to build the circuit. So you want to go to, you want to first add all the components to your screen. So first we have a resistor. So click, put that on your screen, and then its value is 100 or 100 ohms. So you just write 100. Next thing, you want to add your capacitor. So click and click, and it's 100 nanofarads. So done. Then you want to add your ground. So that's up here. And lastly, you want to add that voltage source, V1. So for that, you go to Component, Analog Primitives, or primitives. you go down to Waveform Sources, oh. and you click Sign Source, and click. So for this, you want to go over to the side here where it says voltage versus time and click general. Now you can edit all these. So first it says your or it says your voltage peak to peak is one volt peak to peak. So that means your amplitude is half that because you're only using the positive side when you try to figure out your amplitude. So 0.5. And then it says your frequency is 100 kilohertz or 100k. So that's it. So then you press OK and press Escape so that this guy goes away and you get that cursor back. So now you want to rearrange it so it looks like the picture. So this comes here, this comes here, and this resistor, you have to rotate it. So you click it and then you see this rotate button and click that. OK. So now all you have to do is connect all these things together. So the easiest way to do this is click this thing, pin connections, and now it'll give you red dots wherever um, on the two sides of your components. And then go to this, it's called wire mode. So you click that, click your red dot above your voltage source, just click and hold, and then drag it over to the one end of the resistor. Then click and hold on the other side of your resistor and connect it to the capacitor. And click and hold on the capacitor, add it to the ground. Click and hold on the ground, add it to the voltage source. Okay, circuit one is done. Um, you see on the bottom of your circuit that's on your lab manual on the front page, there's a two and a one. Um, ignore those. And what you want to see is V1 will be node names 1. So that'll be when we go into transient analysis, V1 will be this section. And then node names 2, this will be V2, is this section before the capacitor. So 1 before the resistor, as you can see from node names 1, and 2 before the capacitor, as you see in node names 2. So the next thing, done. You go to analysis transient and you want to plot your input and output so your input was before the resistor and your output is after the resistor before the capacitor so go to transient analysis and click and you click limits to get that screen back up so if you somehow ex press exit then just go back to limits and it pops right back up so don't worry 
Um, so what you're going to do now is you're going to plot um, V1 and V2 on the same graph. So this con controls the graph group controls the graph group the curve will be present on, so the same graph. And then in time range, you want to put in something more like 100 microseconds. So this is pretty much saying how many how many times you want, how many um, waves you want to demonstrate on your graph. So just for example, if we do one microsecond here, then we click run, it comes up with just part of the sine waves. Whereas if we go to transient, back to limits, and then we click 100, then run, nothing, you don't think anything happens, but you click this, auto scale, kind of like auto set on your oscilloscope, and then bam, everything comes up. Notice how these are a little bit choppy here and here, these should be pretty smooth. So what you go to is go back to transients, limits, and then where it says maximum time step, this is how often it samples your signal. Um, put in a really small number. I'm going with six zeros and then a one. And I click run. And then click auto scale. Uh, looks a lot better. Okay, so now that you've done that, you want to print. So uh, what we want you to do before you come to the lab is click your circuit and print this. So file print. And then also for your transient analysis, we want you to go file and print. So that's part one and two of your part of your pre-lab done. Next thing, number three, you want to try going to scale mode. So this will just blow up part of your or blow up a section of your graph. So you want to go to this. So no, it doesn't pop up. But this is your scale mode. This one that has kind of like a zoom on part of your graph. So what you want to do here is go pick somewhere in the middle of your graph more and add maybe two, three signals like that. And then the next thing you want to do is use your cursor icon to see the shift between the two waves. So see how this one peaks high and then this one peaks high. So you go to cursor mode, so that's this one. And see at the bottom you have B on your V1, so that means if I, right, if I left click, then the point of pixel will be on this graph. So see how I can, if I click on this graph, it just stays on that graph. And if I use my right click, it's also on that graph. So that's kind of useless when we're trying to see the phase shift between this signal and this signal. So what you go down here, see you have V1 both, click that again, or actually click V2, and now you have your right click is V1, so right click is V1, and then if you left click, it's V2. So again, right click is V1, left click is V2. So what we want you to do to determine the phase shift is pretty much see where one signal peaks and then where the other one signal peaks. So that's where V1 peaks and then this is where V2 peaks. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So 32.485, 32.485, 34.892, 34.892. And then delta, delta right here, will show you the phase shift. So that's what you need to fill in for question number four, is calculate the phase shift. So this gives you your delta T. And then if you flip one more page, it says on your lab manual it says theta equals delta t over t times 360. So your delta t is 2.407 or when you click your graph see whatever you get and use that value and then your t is your period so your period you can use from one peak to the next peak right so it'll give you a period of roughly 10 microseconds or you can go from base to base. 
base to base, roughly 10. Or you could go from, like, say, the middle to the middle. Also roughly 10. Okay, so that should answer all your questions for um, part one. Next, there's kind of some fun things that you can do on your uh, microchip transient analysis. You can go to scale and zoom in on part of the graph. So this is say, oh, I just want to see, say, this peak kind of in more detail. So you just click and drag. So you click scale mode, then you click and drag. And oh, wow, there's a pretty little part of a wave. So now to get back, you just click auto scale. Oh, and it gives you your whole graph back. Then the next thing it says to do, oh, I guess we kind of did parts one and two at once. OK. Um, and then the next one is use your cursor. I already showed you that. And measuring phase shift. Yeah, showed you that. So I guess we're good. Circuit one is done. OK. Next thing you want to do is circuit number two. So click circuit number one and file save it. And then now you want to modify it to make it look like circuit number two. So what you do is uh, your first, let's just go in order. Your resistor, it says 500 now, not 100 now. So double click it. Oh, don't double click it. Oh, go to your cursor, select mode and then double click it and click 500 done enter or ok it does the same thing um, next your capacitor shouldn't be there anymore you have an inductor so you go delete click that capacitor delete it go to components analog primitives so this is just because you used to have that menu on the side but you don't anymore so you go to components analog primitives passive components and inductor then you can click to pop it on your screen, make it the value that it says, 10 milli, and OK. So press escape to get that other inductor out of there, and then click this one and rotate it. And I just drag it in. Pretty simple. And then this voltage source, you're not using a sine source anymore, you're using a, a pulsed source, so click that and get rid of it. Dead. Um, go to components, analog primitives, wave sources. So instead of sine source, we're using pulse source. See how in the bottom corner, the bottom corner here, when I do this, it shows it that same picture as it says on your test circuit too. So click pulse source and pop it in. Okay, so this is the important part. So if you flip to your next page under microcap tips, it says for example, for a 1 kilohertz signal and amplitude of 1 V volt peak to peak, um, these are the values that you'd plug into here. So what we're using is we're using 2 volts peak to peak and 2 kilohertz. So we're just going to have a few different numbers. So what you want to click is you want to click pulse. See under here you want to click pulse so now you can edit it. Um, you want to click P1 is 0, so this is just kind of like a shift, and same with this one. And then if you go to V1, V1 tells you you're, is, you pretty much just write in the same as both peak, peak to peak. So this isn't amplitude anymore. This is your whole signal. So 2 volts peak to peak, so you click 2. And P5. P5 is the repetition period, or the period of your signal. So it said that your frequency should be 2 kilohertz. So period, or T, equals 1 over frequency. So if frequency is 2 kilohertz, or 2,000, then T is 1 over 2,000. 1 over 2,000 gives you 5 millisecond, or 0.5 milliseconds. So click 0.5 mil. And then 4 and 3 shift your duty cycle. So that's how much of that 0.5 milliseconds your signal is high and how much of it your signal is low. So just to make it a nice even signal we can click 0.25 mil and 0.25 mil. So a duty cycle of 50% and press OK. Bam! Done. Escape and there's your new circuit. So 
all that's really left to do is your transient analysis. So click transient analysis, run. There's a problem. Oh, P4, yeah, didn't have the M there, so it screamed at me. Okay, thank you. And then click transient analysis, run, and you get something. What you want to go to is transient limits, and then in your time range, it's no longer 100 microseconds because your period was 0.5 milliseconds, so let's go with 10 milliseconds so you get pretty much 20 waves. And then your time step doesn't have to be as high anymore. It'll just scream at you and say that it has too many samples if you keep it too, too low. Say, so say I did that. Oh, worked. But, oh, it didn't work. Stop. So if you instead go to something more like that, click around. Yeah, then it works. So the next thing you want to do is click auto scale. Oh wow, and now you get your V1 and V2 on the same graph. So V1, as we said before, no names 1, so that's voltage 1, and no names 2, that's voltage 2. So go back to your transient analysis, and it says to plot these two graphs and the voltage across the resistor on separate graphs. So you go to transient, limits again, everything's pretty much done in here, and then click auto here just makes your life easier and everything has to be on different graphs so this is on graph number one this is on graph number two this will be on graph number three and you're plotting versus time and this is going to be the voltage across the resistor so the voltage on one side of the resistor minus the voltage on the other side of the resistor pretty simple so Okay, and I guess that all looks good then. So then I just click run, bam, and you have your three graphs. Looks, it should look pretty similar to if you flip the page, there's kind of a graph in figure 5.4. So that your third one should look like figure 5.4. So now what you wanna do is you wanna do your rise and fall time on signal three. So go to scale, zoom it in a little bit so you get better readings um, and then it just says click your rise and fall time so you use your cursor again cursor mode and you want to click at the start of it and then you want to click when it gets close or all the way I mean one percent is pretty much nothing so just when it gets all the way to the top and now you see your left is 2.5 milliseconds your right 2.6 37 milliseconds and then your delta is 135 microseconds okay so then that's your rise time so that's from going from the zero voltage to the high voltage now you want to go for your um, your fall time okay so that's when you go from your two volts down to your low value and then again you see your delta now is like 97 microseconds so your rise time is 136 milliseconds uh, er, microseconds and your fall time is 100 microseconds something around there for both of those and then you want to just print this whole thing off like this and then label your T rise and T fall on here so just like it shows in figure 5.4 and then that's pretty much it figure out er, fill out your chart on page 44 or 5.5 oh yeah yeah on page 44 and then that's it thank you very much and um, enjoy the lab see you Wednesday